Is everybody ready? So uh, let's get your article out and let's find out where we left off. <clears throat> We've already reviewed this page uh, yesterday, so I'm not going to review that again. But uh, let's start. <clears throat> have we gotten to the point where it said how a candle actually works? Have we gotten to that? For, we have gotten this far? Yes or no? No. <clears throat> okay, so, so did somebody read Faraday yesterday? You did, right? Did somebody read the paragraph have Faraday in it? <clears throat> Did somebody read the paragraph about uh, wicks being too too uh, too small or too big? Okay, but not we did Faraday or not? No. Okay, what about the next part where it says once you light the candle, you'll quickly? Okay, so if I were going to write a story about how a candle works, <clears throat> I might say that the heat from the candle or from the wick does what? It melts. It melts the wax. So it changes from a solid to a liquid, right? Well, so what? Then what are you going to do? Why yeah, do you want to do that? So the liquid wax does what? It's pulled up through the fibers. By? Capillary Which is made of two parts, which is? Adhesion and adhesion. Okay, and adhesion is where what? Uh, it sticks to things that attract together. So okay, so the wax is attracted to the liquid. string? Oh, wait. Yeah? So yeah. yeah. And, and then what else? Wax attracts wax. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> then we flip it over. It says, <clears throat> once the wax climbs near the top of the wick, it does what? Vaporizes. What's that? It turns into it turns into liquid gas. Yes. Yes. Everybody here? Okay. Now, uh, and then the next paragraph. Did we read this or not? Uh, yeah. The flame is now interesting. Okay, gas stove. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> there are two kinds of flames then. Okay, a pre-mixed flame. Uh, the fuel has been mixed already with enough air to give enough oxygen so that every bit of fuel has enough oxygen to undergo what they call complete combustion. <clears throat> I'll tell you what that is just a second here. <clears throat> and what kind, of, what kind of flame would you get then? All blue. <clears throat> all blue but if you take a look at a candle <clears throat> um you don't really see all blue is that right so that means that um this probably is not a pre-mixed flame so what is it it's a diffusion <clears throat> diffusion flame now in a pre-mixed flame i've already given you all the air you need the oxygen you need and so you don't have to worry about hey i need some more oxygen to react but in a diffusion flame, <clears throat> what if you gobble up all the oxygen right there? <clears throat> Where's the new oxygen coming in? <clears throat> and how does it come in? By what? Diffusion. Diffusion. And it's just bouncing around, and, and, and oxygen bounces everywhere. Some bounce that way, and some bounce this way. But you know what happens? That's why in ninth grade you were taught that uh, diffusion is the movement of uh, chemicals from areas of what? <clears throat> now, it doesn't mean they all just go this way. It's just that more of them go this way than go that way. And that's why it goes from areas of higher concentration to lower. So <clears throat> we have to wait until that oxygen can diffuse in, doesn't it? And, that, and so what you end up getting is, I don't have enough oxygen. This right here is uh, incomplete combustion. So let's take a look at this. This is something I hadn't mentioned yesterday. <clears throat> Complete combustion. If you had a hydrocarbon, and who cares how many carbons, how many hydrogen, you can put whatever number, you know, I C25, H52, you don't put that in there, you can. <clears throat> but you have a hydrocarbon, and you're going to burn it. What's burning mean? Uh, complete <clears throat> okay. If it's complete combustion, every bit of this will react with this and form two products. This will combine with this and make what? CO2. Hey. And this will combine to this and make water. <clears throat> Whoa, that's kind of neat. And so is there CO2 being given off here? Yes. yes. <clears throat> Every burning, all these. Uh, now, <clears throat> but that's assuming you had enough oxygen. This right here is called incomplete combustion. Notice the flame's not all blue? Yes. <clears throat> all right, so what's happening here now? What happens? Why do you have a dark zone? <coughs> yes. Uh, because that's where the fuel or the liquid wax is <coughs> vaporized. 
it's already, uh, it's liquid wax until it gets to the top of the wick and then it gets vaporized. So th there's no liquid wax in there in the dark zone, but what is in there? It's this stuff to vaporize. Yes. And again, we, I'll prove that to you. I'll take some stuff out of the dark zone and put it back in the flame. And notice that <clears throat> it catches on fire, doesn't it? <clears throat> there's lots of fuel right there, right there. Vaporized candle right in there. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, let's go to, oh, okay. So what's going to happen is, what happens when you don't have enough oxygen? You get a thing called incomplete combustion. I still get water. I still get carbon dioxide. But I also get some other things. And we're going to read about those. I'll go ahead and tell you what they are. <clears throat> yes. Now, I knew that, and you can, it's okay to burn candles in your house. There's enough airflow. You don't have to worry about how much CO, carbon monoxide, comes in there. <clears throat> but <clears throat> what you would have to be really careful about is if you had, like, a thousand candles in a small room and you were in there. Uh, you could get quite a bit of carbon monoxide in there. Another thing is my car. My automobile burns hydrocarbons, but not... It's incomplete. We get carbon dioxide and water coming out of the tailpipe. Guess what else we get? <clears throat> carbon monoxide and a lot of it. Don't ever, ever operate your car into in a garage with all the doors closed. Because <clears throat> you're in a car, you know, oh, it's cold out. I'm closing the door, but I'll, you know, don't ever do that because you know, what you do is you'll sit in a car and you'll just get sleepier and sleepier. You'll fall asleep and you will never, never wake up the rest of your life. Your life will be over. <clears throat> you'll be you'll be killed i've heard of uh, people who they want to cook out on a barbecue grill with briquettes you know little charcoal briquettes <clears throat> and all of a sudden it's raining oh i really want to cook that steak and they bring their grill indoors and, and they die <clears throat> briquettes are terrible they're 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 so incomplete combustion <clears throat> a, a sad story i heard family four kids they had a pickup truck and they had a cab on the back you know and they're going to cross country. He said, we're driving at night. Those kids are going to be in the back and they'll be asleep. And I can drive all night. Unfortunately, there was a, a little hole in their tailpipe. And a, a carbon monoxide came up in the back. They woke up uh, after driving all night. All their kids were dead, all four of them. <clears throat> so carbon monoxide is serious. But the candle, we're okay in here. We have plenty of air circulating. But <clears throat> that's one of the products of incomplete combustion. Another one is C, plain old carbon, and another one, diatomic carbon, which is two atoms of carbon together. <clears throat> All right, so let's go down. Um, <clears throat> oh, by the way, I want to show you that. For example, um, we haven't talked about why do you see a yellow flame? We've never talked about it, have we? Well, a, ga a gas? Do we do that? Did we talk about that? Yeah. Incand Did I use Incandes the word incandescence? Oh, <clears throat> okay, so let's take a look. I'm going uh, to go to that yellow zone and put this in here. And as soon as I go in the yellow zone, wh what do you see coming out of there? Carbon. See that black stuff? What's that? Carbon. That's carbon. Soot, isn't it? It's called soot. And matter of fact, here it is right here. And it is carbon. Same thing as in your pencil. <clears throat> your pencil is graphite, carbon. <clears throat> so if I... Right now, the carbon's here, but it hasn't combined with oxygen yet. It has not hot enough yet. But by the time it gets to the top, it's hot enough, and there's air, and it makes carbon dioxide, and we don't see any soot, do we? <clears throat> Another thing you should know, <clears throat> if you ever, I know you did this. All of you did this, and you saw that beaker getting cloudy. And you said, well, it got cloudy, but you kept looking at the flame, but what do you see happening to the beaker? <coughs> what is it? Is that PH2O? Yes. Now, now, that's not. What is that? That's not smoke. What is that? We, we're going to call If you have kids and grow up, call it smoke. Okay? You don't want to confuse them. But what is this white stuff? No. You can't see carbon dioxide. Unless it's dry ice. <coughs> what's, the, what's the white stuff? That's not like the black stuff. What's the white stuff? Oh, don't let me down. Carbon. No. <coughs> okay, wait, wait, wait. I'll show you, wait, I'll show you. <coughs> All right, when I do this one demonstration, you will know. 
That's right. Yeah. That is correct. <clears throat> so what's the white stuff? Vaporized wax. Vaporized wax. Yes? But now, see this thing here? Look, I'll even put my run my finger on there. Look at that. <clears throat> what is that stuff? It's water. It's water. I didn't put water in the air. Where'd it come from? <clears throat> see that? Are you okay with that? Yes, no? All right. <clears throat> so anyway, th there's a lot of carbon in this yellow zone. And uh, you said we read that yesterday? Where, where was it? Where's the word incandescence here? <clears throat> um, here? Wait. Who read uh, incandescent yesterday? Where was it? Okay, so here's what happens. Uh, we'll find it. These little particles of a soot, okay, they get so hot that they glow. And just like a, a light bulb, and I said, unfortunately, uh, not unfortunately, your generation won't have as many of these light bulbs that have been around for 150 years. <clears throat> they were called incandescent light bulbs. And incandescent light bulbs, they had a little tiny wire in them called a filament. And you push a huge amount of electricity through the little wire, and it starts to glow. How many of you have a toaster at home? <clears throat> you, ever, you ever looked at the toaster? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> what, why is it, what's it doing? It's incandescing. You're pushing so much electricity through there, it's actually giving off light, isn't it? And that's what these carbon particles are doing. These little black things are, are glowing. Otherwise, you would not see this flame. It might be blue if you had enough oxygen, but we wouldn't see it if it wasn't for the carbon. <clears throat> now, I'll show you one more little demonstration with that. <clears throat> yeah, wipe the screen here. You would never expect a thing that gives off light to make shadows, would you? I'm giving off light. Why would I? Why would I? Why would the light from that thing here? Can everybody see the back of the screen? Uh, yeah. I'll try to get out of everybody's way. You gotta look underneath. Yeah. And you see this part right here? Like, what's a shadow? What's that black? Dark zone. <clears throat> it's actually a little above that, but yeah, you're right. Dark zone, but that means there's a lot of th something's blocking the light, isn't it? That means there's a lot of carbon in there. Oh, that's kind of neat. Um, I think when Faraday did this, he had sunlight, and he bounced sunlight into the room, and that's a really bright light. It made a, a pretty big shadow with that, that flame. <coughs> Ouch. How do you bounce sunlight? Mm. What now? How do you bounce like the sun? <coughs> a mirror, yeah. Um, now, if the sun happened to be in the right part of the sky and you had a window in the right place, you could just let it come in like that. But otherwise, you just take a mirror and bounce it off like there. <coughs> All right. Um, let's go. I need to know what, what we read and didn't read, though. Um, did we talk about the um, talk about the gas stove, right? Did we talk about the relatively cool region above the wick? No. Okay, let's have somebody read right there. Somebody had, anybody hasn't read at all. He said, well, I'd raise my hand, but these guys always raise their hand. So, yeah, Zach, <coughs> thanks. Right here, the relatively cool. Uh, the relatively cool region just above the wick is the dark zone. There the release molecules of fuel are insufficiently heated and have so little oxygen that little or no light is emitted. What form the release molecules take in this region, how they break down into small atoms or diatomic molecules and where they combine to form solid carbon particles is not understood. One of the most curious features of the flame is that although vaporized fuel is found just above the wick, at no point in the flame does vaporized fuel ever come in contact with any significant amount of oxygen. Contrary to my own intuitive picture of the flame, neither the heat nor the light of the flame result from a simple oxidation of fuel vaporized fuel. <coughs> All right, go ahead. One more paragraph. The blue regions of the candle flame are part of what is called the reaction zone. In that zone, the large hydrocarbon molecules vaporized from the wick are broken down into smaller molecules, which then react chemically with one another to make the oxygen that's breathing in from the air outside the flame. The bluish light is primarily due to the emission of two exciting molecules, molecular carbon and a hydrocarbon, that are produced in the chemical reactions. 
two modules instead of being tied thermally by the hot environment. And actually, he's produced an excited space by the chemical reaction. <coughs> All right, let's go down to this paragraph here, a new reader, somebody new, somebody hadn't done. All right, Abby. Whereas single atoms emit light of a particular wave. Uh, this one, uh, oh. to me. Oh. To me, the most interesting portion of the candle flame is the yellow region, which is called the carbon zone, or the luminous zone. There are carbon particles that get into incandescence. Incandescence. <clears throat> <clears throat> all right so there are things when you uh, excite atoms sometimes they can give off energy themselves uh, later in the year we'll talk about uh, the quantum mechanics model of the atom it says that when electrons can absorb energy and jump to a higher level and then they come back down and, and they release energy in a form of light and when i see like fireworks that's what you're looking at excited atoms now, some atoms are excited will excite and you see red light, and some will be green, and some might be purple, uh, or some might be uh, yellow. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> they're saying that actually all the colors are being emitted, but there's so much yellow being emitted, it kind of hides all the rest of them. Um, also, later in the year, the second semester, <clears throat> I'll let you look at a light, like a neon. You ever see a neon sign? Yes, yeah, like You know, neon. hot now, pizza, okay. That looks like red orange, doesn't it? <clears throat> but red orange uh, light is not the only light coming to your eye. And so I'll give you this little thing you put on your eye, and it separates the um, all the colors from each other. And you'll actually see there's green and there's yellow in there. And you said your eye never saw it because uh, the red, the orange red was so predominant. Same thing here. He's saying every color is actually given off here, but there's so much yellow that's why it looks yellow. <clears throat> um, I forgot to ask you this. Um, one of the first handout sheets I gave you had to do with Faraday. And we'll have to, you'll have to look at that before the test. But on the last page, and I'm going to see if I can find mine. <clears throat> on the last page, um, oh, shoot, where is it? <clears throat> I, thought I, had, I thought I had a copy of it on here. Oh, I got it. Harry, you, um, you want to use mine real quick? Yeah. All right, All right thank you. <clears throat> I was going to get it out for tomorrow, but I uh, think so. What would a candle look like if it was in orbit? And they actually did it. They actually did light a candle when they're in orbit. Thanks. Everybody see this one? Okay, that's about Faraday, wasn't it? Look on the last page, though. What, what's the last page say? <clears throat> Here's a picture of a regular candle flame, and then there's one in uh, orbit. They lit a candle in orbit, in free fall. And, and what's it look like there? A dome, like a dome. Right. As a matter of fact, what happens is when the hot air, the hot gases, are actually, they expand, and they're less dense in here, so they, they start to rise, don't they? That's why the flame always goes up. But in your in orbit, there is no up or down. The astronauts are floating. Nothing falls. Get it? And so, so the hot gases, they don't go up. They go what? They go out equally in every direction so that's what the candle flame would look like there it'd be uh and also it'd be almost all blue because almost every bit of it would have enough oxygen to to burn so it'd be blue and it'd be kind of like round colored Man, that back. <clears throat> you know when you're in a space shuttle uh they don't have their space suits on they i mean they um no not in space in space there's no oxygen there's no air or anything so but in the space shell, they, they breathe air. They breathe air like you do. And, uh, but you're in uh, an orbit. You're in this thing. Uh, I don't want to get to the physics of that. But <clears throat> All right, let's go on down. Um, 
it says here, um, here it is, the solid carbon particles in the Lumina zone, and it gives you some numbers, and that won't mean much to you, 10 to 200 nanometers, that's, that's really small, and it's somewhere 50, and it said uh, the first person to explain the yellow uh, light in terms of incandescent particles was this guy named Humphrey Davy. Now remember, Faraday, that's how he got his big break, didn't he? He starts working for um, uh, Humphrey Davy. <clears throat> All right. Okay, now, I only have a couple more things and a couple more demonstrations. I'll be done here. Um, let's look at here. Uh, let's see. As the particles pass through the luminous zone, they are consumed by reacting with water and carbon dioxide, the principal products of the flame, <clears throat> to yield carbon monoxide. It's a smokeless flame. The particles are totally consumed by the time they reach the top of the flame. So we don't really see carbon particles out of this candle because by the time they reach the top, they're hot enough to react with oxygen, turn into carbon dioxide. <clears throat> Otherwise, they would be released as soot. And when I put the beaker there, what I've done is I've, uh, I've grabbed them before they got the chance to get too hot. Uh, if I get them before they get a chance too hot, then I get, that's when you see the black smoke? Yeah. They, they never did get hot enough to combine with oxygen. And that's where you get soot, which is known as carbon. <clears throat> All right, one more uh, paragraph. Instead of burning the vapor in this fashion, uh, oh, by the way, I, I don't have to read this, but I've had some students do it in the past where they took a test tube and they put it in the dark zone and they took it out, put it in the dark zone and took it out. <clears throat> and then they put, uh, a, then they lit the test tube and it actually would light because vaporized candle wax was in the test tube and then he put the flame on there and you can actually make a little flame uh, out of the test tube there. <clears throat> All right. And the last thing I'm going to show you is uh, this one. And I, um, if you don't see me, if I don't mention it, then um, I won't have anything else. Uh, this will be the last thing that will be on the candle, okay? How many, uh, um, I think there were three total students who did this experiment. Who, Zach. who did that? Zach. Zach did it? This was like the one that was there. <clears throat> All right, so I'm going to do, uh, Zach already did it, but I'm going to recreate it. And like, yeah. <clears throat> I don't mention to you, and if you read this, the author, uh, when I first saw this a long time ago, it was explained to me and it made so much sense that I thought that was it. Uh, it was wrong, but it made too much sense. And <clears throat> the idea is, <clears throat> I put the flask on here and the flame, uh, the explanation everybody was using at the time was the flame uses up the oxygen, creates a vacuum, sucks the water in. Okay, <clears throat> now, <clears throat> if that were the case, if that were the case, and he even says in here, a lot of people explain it that way and it's wrong. If that's the case, as soon as I put it on here, the water should come up, shouldn't it? As soon as it come up. But what's the first thing you notice when I do this? Now watch carefully. I think you can see, look up on, this, look on the screen or whatever. Am I ready? Watch. See those bubbles? Well, <clears throat> so what's going on here? Um, I even had, I remember a teacher long ago, he used to have his class do this experiment, carefully measure the flask, carefully mark this, and find out what percent of the flask did the water take up. And he said, see, we got an average of around 20%. You know what that proves? It proves that air is 20% oxygen. I thought that was a great experiment until I read that that's not the case. It's not the case. So what happened is when you, that when you put that in there, the heat from the flame, it heats the air. And the air says, I want to do what? Get out. I want to get out. I can't get out anywhere except where? Through the water. And that's why you see the bubbling. So a lot of air leaves the flask. Then the flame goes out and cools, it starts cooling off and when it starts cooling off, then the air contracts and that creates a vacuum. But again, nothing, you know this, nothing in science sucks. There's no sucking going on. But I will tell you, when you have a partial vacuum here and you don't have a vacuum here, this air will try to fill in that vacuum, can't get in, can't get in, can't get in. 
I'll push that water into that vacuum. That's what happens. The water gets pushed into the flask. Yes? Wait, so what happens first, the, the heat? What is it? The heat from the flame heats the air inside the flask. And that makes them bounce around fast and they, they want to expand. And so that's why you see bubbles. Now, then the heat goes out, there's no heat, and now this air, this, I have less air in here now, but it's cooled off and forms a little bit of a vacuum. And then this air tries to fill in the vacuum by pushing the water into the vacuum. So anyway, um, it's a neat experiment. Uh, what made you, had you seen this online? What made you do it? I saw it online. Very good, okay. Did they explain it online? What do you think they said? Do you remember? I don't remember. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's possible. It, it just looked kind of neat, didn't it? I got to get this ready for the next class. You know why I have to do this? Dry out the... Why? Why do you have to dry it out? Because yeah. You're right. They, they absorbed a lot of water, didn't they? And you know what that crackling is? That's uh, changing water into a vapor so quickly that it breaks the sound barrier. Crack, 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 crack. That's how quickly it changes it into a gas now once i get rid of all the water then it can do its job of uh melting the wax bringing the wax up like that by the way i hope i hope that the labs we've done an explanation i hope you don't walk out of here thinking that the wick is what's burning <clears throat> i hope you don't because i can tell you right now every class had somebody who took a piece of wick like this big and they burned it and how long does it take to burn a piece of wick about three seconds there's no way that that's what's burning all right another thing is if you took the mass of your candle you would have noticed every five minutes every 10 minutes every 30 minutes you were seeing that you're losing mass you're losing mass you're losing mass what do you think where's it going <clears throat> where's it going it's the wax changing into other things isn't that right that's where all your mass went into the air and so the candle itself, the, the paraffin itself is the fuel. I just need the wick to melt the wax and to bring up the wax, the liquid wax, so I can vapor, uh, light the vaporized fuel. Yes? My candle was heavier after it was done than it was when it started. <clears throat> All right. Now, even though I didn't get to watch you the whole time, um, it would be interesting to talk to you and say, what did you do? Do you know I had some people that... They took their candle and they took another candle and they put it and it can make it heavier for different reasons but and i'm glad you brought this up um i have never seen a candle gain mass ever uh but i don't know how to explain it to you i don't know what you did uh did you happen to change candles no did you happen to um have another candle that you dripped over the top and and, and wax went in there is that possible so even though I don't know the answer, I know that this thing has to lose mass. Uh, I, I, do, uh, I didn't show you guys that. I put one of those candles and it took 30 minutes. That's all. This candle was that big. It took 30 minutes to melt. See that? So without stirring, that wax there can melt like that. But this candle here, I bet I could do that for days. I bet I could do it for 15 hours, I bet. And it still wouldn't burn down. All right, what do you think? You think you understand the can a little bit better? All right. Uh, what I'd like you to do, and uh, I'm going to have you, uh, you can break, you can go to the tables, you can, uh, not that table there, but uh, you have, what is it, 1247? You have, and this is Wednesday, I, gotta, I, I made a mistake one Wednesday, 1255, so you have, um, yeah, 13 minutes. So what I'd like you to do is to form a group, and on the back of the, hand, the review sheet I gave you, I'd like you to sit down and just uh, have one person write and start writing the story of how a candle works and start checking off. Every time you use one of those vocabulary words right, then you put it on. Now, if each one of you want to write that down, you can take it home and try to finish it and say, I'm ready. I'm ready to write the story. All right, go form groups, go to the tables. You have the rest of the period to uh, try to write a story about how a candle works.